You're done. You're washed. It's over. All right, let's uh, track back. Golden State Warriors, four-time NBA champions, of course, yada, yada, yada. Draymond Green got suspended somewhat indefinitely until he fixes his mess after pimp-slapping Yusuf Nurkic in the throat. The team since then has held over a 12th place in the Western Conference, being only two games below 500 in a competitive Western Conference, as always. But 17 and 19 isn't a look after losing 118 to 133 against the Toronto Raptors, and since then they have not looked the same. They have only margin over a four-game winning streak over the middle, over late December, around the mid to late December, around the holiday break. But since then they've only won two out of their last seven games. They fell short over a three-game losing streak, and this isn't. And they've gotten back-to-back-to-back to back to back losing streak, trailing around at least six-game losing streaks. The Warriors started off the off uh, the season hot after only losing opening night, and then winning their first five straight of uh, uh, obscenely, you know, still trailing around the doubts in the incurring in-season tournament, keeping the momentum. Over the doubts over an aging backup point guard out of Chris Paul. An inexperienced rotation after losing one of their primary scorers out of Jordan Poole. But Draymond Green just couldn't leave well enough alone and just be a veteran. Is he the primary reason why the Warriors are in the state they are? Absolutely not. The Warriors team as a whole is cooked. They have terrible defensive structure. Their transition is poor. Their shooting splits have depleted either than uh, Stephen Curry that's still playing in an all-NBA form. Klay Thompson, he did play very well against the the Toronto Raptors, but we couldn't say that where he's trailing around ten, uh, at least one of nine. I saw him shoot two for eight. And this isn't looking good. Where even Stephen Curry felt invisible around the first quarter. Around the Toronto Raptors, one of the full games I've seen recently. And you can see over the poor shooting splits, y- you guys are in massive trouble if you allowed over 35 points of R.J. Barrett to show out. I don't know. Steve Kerr just feels like a, he's been overly reliant over the foundation of the Warriors' offense for the past decade. He doesn't have a definitive style or culture. The only person that's been able to even be an upside over this entire season so far, either than Stephen Curry, is one of their younger players, uh, Brandon uh, Pozanemski. He usually doesn't have a bad plus-minus, worse shooting performances, but uh, when he keeps his momentum and he can get way better games, but this is development for him. People expected more of a step up over their more homegrown drafted talents like Jonathan Kaminga that cha- that got rid of his braids. I think that's why he's shooting terribly. He dropped over 13 points so he could barely guard anybody. Uh, flat-footed. Terrible over transition. He can shot block. He can f- attack over the rim whenever he can. But there's not really that much of a transcendent game over him. The Warriors basically got perennial uh, rotation bigs. That could s- sit on the bench on any other team. Honestly. Kevon Looney as well. And Jonathan Kamenga. And Kamenga was already over the previous game where the, you know, the Denver Nuggets shot a game uh, use when uh, Nikola Jokic shot a game winner. He already uh, just ran over to the locker room and bitched over on the media that he already lost faith with Steve Kerr. And I think majority of fans already lost faith over with Steve Kerr. And I'm not trying to say this all because it's a losing way. Steve Kerr, I think, and this goes for a majority of successful NBA coaches, when they don't have a definitive system, and it's just carried over on the play style of the player of the individual talent, it's not really a defective way to keep on the tenure 
as a coach like Greg Popovich did, or at least at least how Thibodeau still gets gets work done because they have a definitive system and have a play style that fits over on the team that can fit over for comp- for competitive basketball. But when the Warriors were out of KD, Clay Thompson was out to the out for the season after an uh, injury that kept him out during the NBA Finals. And it was just Stephen Curry with with uh, Moses Moody, Jordan Poole. You still had Jonathan Kamenga when they traded it over for D'Angelo Russell. They missed the goddamn playoffs. That can't be definitively because Steve Kerr is a great coach. It's just because he was carried over by talent. The same thing goes to Tyron Lue, Barry, Billy Donovan. You 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 see you don't see coaches like uh, Steve Kerr get compared over to the greats, other than his tenure, his successes, and possibly his coaching connections. And this obviously is a de facto reason, if he doesn't have that type of deeper connection to develop over his young players, to involve a style, and you're seeing that, like, hinder any success that the Warriors can in this part of the season, when there's still a lot of basketball to be played, but there's already a low margin of error. Draymond Green keeps getting in trouble. Curry's too old. Uh, Clay Thompson can barely keep his consistent shooting splits like he's always done since his injury. And it's not like, oh, since he's gotten injured, he's declined. He was shooting, he was one of the top three-point shooters just the season prior. So there is no excuse. Overall, the foundation for the team is cooked. Andrew Wiggins is an on-and-off rotation wing. And Kaminga and Kevon Looney just just not developed over for starting NBA basketball. If you put them on any other goddamn team, Podzinski's a B tick. That he's a he's just a rip off Divincenzo, but he at least has an upside where he actually cares about the game. And Moses Moody and the rest of the rotation players. Oh, I think they even had Jermichael Green for a season, and they're just not there. There's no tenure over the foundation for the Warriors. There doesn't seem to be over a plan. And they're just ticking over to still be lastfully competitive because of their 2022 Finals Championship run. And that all went to a crashing halt because of one offseason. And right now, they can't even beat teams like the Toronto Raptors that just got two new starters. They can barely beat an injured Phoenix Sun squad. They can barely beat a San Antonio Spurs team. They barely stood a chance... Against the Washington Wizards. And and they're coming up in close games where they where they should be blowing out teams. But it's obvious that the Warriors are way behind and there's teams that already evolved their style and playing just way better and father times taking advantage of it. Hopefully, uh I don't know what's gonna be the decision around the trade deadline. If uh, Kevon Looney's possibly going to get traded because he's already in the batting races over in the locker room and there's doubts. And already publicizing, publicizing your like frustration with the team already is an, you know, a big little red flag yeah, keeping, your, keeping your stay on the squad. And Draymond Green's possibly coming back. Trying to be in the good graces of everyone, saying that he's emotional. He's saying he's contemplating retirement. I think, like, you're not even the only one that's contemplating retirement at this point of the game, Draymond. And uh, knowing if Steve Kerr is still going to be uh, viable over his job, either than the recent success he's had with the Warriors that's lasted for damn near a decade. So, all I know is Warriors keep over this stride. They could be a competitive playing team. And leech over on mediocrity, or there needs to be some uh, moves done around the deadline, or just if they're still trying to play this out, they need to m- overhaul this entire Warrior squad because they know the era is over. We know the era is over at this point. They're, they're overall getting cooked, and it's hard to see because, of course, we've seen teams that's had. Years of dominance. We're seeing that with the New England Patriots. We're probably seeing that with uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. Even though you guys want to discredit the Disney Championship. We saw that with the Boston Celtics. Kind of been years of being competitive, but not really a legitimate contender. 
in Alabama recently after getting pimp slapped by Michigan. And now the Michigan is finally coming in as world cha- uh, national champions. So, congratulations to them. But the, the, there's got to be an understanding that there's a changing of the guard. And hopefully, if the Warriors figure this out, they won't be in the same area as how the Detroit Pistons are right now. Where they just came over some large success over the decade, and then it's just years of uh, obscurity and mediocrity. And no, but in I'd rather be tr- in for certain franchises. You'd rather be trash and mediocrity. Tell me how you guys feel in the comment section down below. That's it from the DST show. Like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.